So today we are in the soil pit, and this soil pit is surrounded by Falcata alfalfa, which is a yellow flowered alfalfa that is very drought tolerant and, uh, and actually tolerant to a wider range of pHs, and it lasts a lot longer. So a regular sativa alfalfa that people are familiar with, with a purple flower, maybe a three to five year crop, and then you take it out and put something else in. This Falcata alfalfa is really great in rangeland settings and can last for a really long time. It's not going to have the same kind of production. It's not as, um, it doesn't have the same amount of biomass, but because of its hardiness, it can be a really effective crop. So what we're looking at right now is why it's so effective. And that's this beautiful root structure that comes down from it. Uh, sativa type alfalfa has a tap root and it's kind of a single tap root. Here you'll see that there are a lot of different roots coming off of this one plant and they go really deep. And al regular sativa alfalfa, we have not seen roots this deep. Um, when we dug this last year, we got down a full two meters and the alfalfa was still pencil thick down there. So right now what we're doing is excavating around the falcata root. And from this pit, we're going to do a couple things. We are going to take samples of bulk density and carbon concentration. And when we do bulk density and carbon concentration, we can calculate the carbon stock. That is how much carbon is in that soil overall. The measurement for carbon is done on a percentage basis. So in order to know how much total carbon there is, you need to know what the mass of soil per area is and what that percentage is. And so what we're doing is we're going to measure the carbon concentration at depth through the depth of the profile and the distance away from the root so that we understand what that overall distribution of the carbon looks like. Um, one thing that we know when it comes to carbon sequestration is the deeper that carbon is input into the soil, the more likely it is to stay around. That soil carbon on the top, there's a lot more microorganisms up there. They're using that carbon, which is good. We want the microorganisms to use the carbon. They're the ones doing the work in the soil. But when it's up at the top, it gets cycled much more quickly. When it's down deep, there's fewer organisms, there's uh, a lot less oxygen, there's a much larger gradient before it can get up to the top of the soil. And so when there's carbon that is taken from the photosynthesis of the plant, sent down through the roots and down deep in the soil, we're much more likely to get carbon to stick around. So one of the things we're really interested in with this plant is with this really deep, extensive root system, how much carbon is being put down deep in the soil? 